What's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Get Real Bass Fishing. Today we're actually going to be looking back at some of our videos and I'm going to be talking about them as if I'm watching them for the first time here and explaining to you what was actually going down in the videos off camera, why I chose what I chose to do and, and stuff like that. So I think this is going to be a really cool experience um, being that it's winter now and we're not really catching many fish. We're looking back at what worked last year, what didn't work, and we're kind of explaining what's going on. That way you guys next year can you see these situations that I'm fishing here and I'll give you the answers to what I did or didn't do. So let's jump right into it. I think this is gonna be fun. Let's go. So for this video, I chose this one specifically because it was one of the more memorable times out on the water and um, it was just really fun and cool. It was a cool situation. But uh, this is the Bucktails for Striped Bass, Fluke, and Bluefish. During this video, I decided when I was in the truck, I was like, all right, let's go do a multi-species video. Let's try to catch a Fluke, Bluefish, Striper, and what else, or whatever else is gonna bite and just see if we can do it. And uh, this is this is where the video gets really interesting. So as you can see from the video, uh, the surf was kind of insane. I think it was pretty close to high tide because by the time I got down to the inlet that I was fishing, it was still incoming for a little bit. But you can see the water, the surf. You can see where the waves are breaking out on this water. There's a sandbar just past my casting range, which is why I'm assuming it's high tide here at this point. But uh, yeah, I casted as far as I could to the breaks and I was fishing the trough where all the water was coming in from the side and just meeting each other. And uh, it was just pretty crazy. So I was like, all right, this is, this is a good spot. And just to the left of me, there was actually a cut through the sandbar into the ocean. But I did this, I threw out one of my one and a half ounce spike bucktails and uh, I managed to catch a fish that I really didn't expect to catch, but uh, yeah. You guys saw those waves, I didn't expect to catch a, a fluke. What? Look at that. Hmm. Mwah. I'm gonna give him a smooch and release. We're not gonna take him home, I'm not even gonna measure him. He's, he might be keeper, but I don't know, it doesn't look like there's enough meat <laughs> for uh, for me to kill him. So we're gonna give him a smooch and release and send him back to the surf and get more. Like, what the heck? <laughs> so there's the first fish of the multi-species tap challenge was the fluke. I caught it on a one and a half ounce bucktail. I was using, I believe I have the gotcha grub with the four inch grub on there, which was very useful in the future on this video. But with that being said, it's, uh, let's see, June, it's early June and there just so happened to have been a lot of fish moving in and the waters were warming up. There was bait all over the place. So all the fluke are now coming up, coming uh, closer to shore. And bucktails are really one of the best ways to catch them. You can catch them on swim baits with jig heads or my silicone jigs. I make uh, smooch and release silicone jigs. They're just like bucktails, but silicone instead of bucktail. And they work really, really good. But I was catching fish on the half ounce, three quarter ounce, one ounce, one and a half ounce. All all summer I was catching fluke on those, uh, the bucktails and the silicone jigs, no matter what size. It just depended on where the water was, how high it was, and if I was fishing around the cuts or in the troughs, was there bait present? Because a lot of times these fluke, they'll just school up and just chase bait all along the shorelines where they're just being pushed onto the, the shore and really nowhere to go. But this was a really cool, cool experience catching that my first fish was a fluke when I knew I was going to target bass and bluefish and uh, at least catch the bass. So here you can see uh, I'm fishing a cut. So what a cut is, if you guys don't know, it's where the same bar essentially just goes down or flows out, flows in from the ocean to the trough. And I was targeting those specific areas because with all the bait coming in, coming into the troughs, there's fish that are gonna follow that too. So if they're not going over the sandbar in the breaks of the, the waves, then they're gonna be following inside that cut and, and uh, chasing bait. So I was targeting a lot of those, those cuts. 
but as you can see the surf was pretty insane the wind was rough and uh, we're just walking down the beach trying to catch some fish so I got to the jetty finally and I was fishing the inlet and I was targeting specific spots in the inlet where I knew that there were either drop-offs or rips and you can pretty much determine where that is just by looking at it. The inlets are moving really, really, really rough. They're going really fast and you can see if there's a sandbar around the rocks, around the jetties, you can see where that rip forms and you can also see the waves coming in where they start getting the white rollers that's a little bit shallower water. And then where they taper off, there's a drop off. So on the inlet, you can see it's an incoming tide on this video. It's coming in and I'm targeting casting up current and just dropping my bucktail down, hopping it off the bottom, dropping it down. It's gonna be getting deeper and deeper as I get down that drop off and the current keeps taking it. So let it drop, hit the bottom, bounce back up, drop, hit the bottom, bounce it back up. And that's what I was doing in this video, and it managed to have caught some fish. It's a little bias. All right, first cast. So the goal of doing a multi-species video is successful right now. Got two bat, got a bass and a fluke. Mwah. So right there on my first cast on the inlet with the bucktail technique of hopping it off the bottom around the, the drop-offs and everything. It worked, I got my first bass, and that was probably the smallest bass of the day and for the week as, as well. But yeah, I mean, that technique just works whenever there's moving water. If you can get something, you can figure out where they are in the water column, whether they're on the bottom, the top, middle. If they're on the bottom, bucktails were great, and that's that's what was working here. And we did, we did very, very well. So yeah, our first three fish happened to have been the three fish that I was targeting for a multi-species um, video and we did it right right from the start and it was really cool kind of like calms down your nerves throughout the day you're like oh am I gonna finish what I tried to do and I did so it was like alright cool it works but um, a lot of you guys don't know that I, I actually put stuff in the description of these videos where I talk about uh, what gear I'm using whether it's rod lore, reel, whatever it is, I put it in the description. If you guys want to purchase them, then that's where it is. But I get questioned about the belt I'm using, my plier holders and bags. So I'm going to use this opportunity. You can see me here standing on the jetty. I have a Z belt on, so I'll link him below, Z belt surf fishing or surfcasting.com, whatever it is, it's down below. And I have a um, Turtle Cove plier holder. They're like carbon fiber. They are so much better than those flimsy little nylon, whatever they are, plier holders that come with any pliers you get. Uh, as well as I'm using a Surfrite bag. Uh, I don't really see the need to go for anything bigger or better or more expensive. And you know, this is this bag specifically has gotten the job done for me in the water, in the salt, sometimes not washing off the bag the same day. And it's been lasting three years, four years now, something like that. So for 45 bucks, I got a Surfrite bag that's been with me for four or five years. And uh, it's, it's pretty good. But yeah, let's go. There we go. Another one. This one feels a little bit bigger. So I'm glad I grabbed that, uh, that glove. So you hear me talking about grabbing a glove, and if you're uh, if you're too cool to wear a glove, then whatever. But I like to wear gloves on the jetty because a lot of times you don't want to high stick your rod and just have it up and bending and snap. So uh, that's that's a lot of times something you don't want to do. You know, it's not the best thing to do for your rod. So I wear a glove that way I can twist the the line, grab it onto my hand and it's not gonna cut through my hand because braid is very, very thin and it'll cut. I'm sure you guys, if you've used braid, you've cut your casting finger, you've tied some knots and you've cut your pinkies. It's not fun because once you do that, you realize it's there and every single knot you tie, you are reopening that wound. So wearing gloves just puts that extra support layer in between you and the line and you can just twist as much as you want and pull up your fish instead of trying to high stick your rod. And it's pretty doggone rough.
In this video, I shot a lot of slow-mo action, and uh, honestly, I, I like that. I don't know if you guys prefer me shooting some, some more slow-mo in the future, but let me know in the comments below, because I think it adds a lot of really cool effects. And uh, yeah, I like the slow-mo. Now we want to kind of avoid slamming these fish on rocks. So I'm, I'm going to take it easy, let him get out of the rocks. Not that he's close to it, I just don't want him going up. So we're gonna move, forget the camera. It's a bass. Whoa. The wave took my fish up. Bass. He's got a big old scar on his tail. I swear to you, I caught this fish before. So that fish with the scar on his tail, I'm pretty sure I caught him like two weeks earlier in some back bays uh, a little bit further west. But yeah, I'm, I'm almost certain I caught that exact fish a couple weeks before. Which is crazy because uh, in a couple videos before this one, I actually underwater videoed a uh, horseshoe crab and the the pattern on it and the the um mollusks or whatever's on, on on these horseshoe crabs i actually recorded that exact horseshoe crab two weeks before i shot that video in another back bay a little bit farther west than where it was so it, it was really cool to have caught or seen two of the exact same animals at the same time uh, in, in one year, just two weeks later. So it was pretty neat, pretty, I don't know, the odds of that are almost impossible being how big the ocean is and being at the exact same spot where both of those fish or horseshoe crab were at the uh, its exact time. It's mind boggling. I promise you, on the uh, spiked bucktail, so you see that bucktail, that is a like a minnow head bucktail and I like fishing that uh, when it comes to getting down to the water, the bottom of the water a little bit quicker because it's more, it's not aerodynamic, I don't know what the word is when it comes to water but it kind of cuts down into the water column a little easier being that it's so thin and narrow it just cuts down and gets down a little bit further as opposed to the, the bullet ones or like the the smiling ones so i i love those when it comes to just casting and fishing like when i'm fishing the surf i prefer those bullet head ones or the smiling ones because they're more of like a a floof at the end because you, you can just load those up with fur and they kind of just like with like a badminton thing whatever whatever they call those things the little birdies they kind of just float in the water like this and it'll just float float down and flutter around but when it comes to getting down quick, I like the fish head ones. So I make them and I sell them both on the website. But there's those are the two situations where I like fishing one or the other. And a half now. There's a school of them out there. Let's go. Water away from the rocks. I don't want them banging up on the rocks. Another bass. I'm telling you guys, you find those rips, you're gonna find the fish. Spikes bucktail, little guy, this is not, nothing of size, but they're sitting there. Nice little bass, come on. Yeah, once you find those rips and you find those little holes that are just past the drop-offs and just sitting there on the other side of the current, you're gonna find fish, man. That's where, there's, there's staging areas. So there's times when fish are traveling and then they'll stage in a, in a hole or a drop or a rip or around, um, around the jetty or whatever it might be. And they'll stage there, they'll feed up, and then they'll move and probably chase some bait, come to the next staging area, feed up, move, and then they'll just keep doing that back and forth with the tides. And once you find the staging area or where they're staging, then uh, it's almost game over until they move or the bait moves. Because that's, that's one thing, like the big fish aren't just there for no reason. The big fish are there because of little fish. So when it comes to 
surf fishing or stuff like that, you're essentially chasing the bait. And when it comes to that, you're essentially chasing whatever the bait is chasing. So bunker and stuff like that that are filter feeders, they're chasing plankton. So wherever plankton's drifting along in the, in the water and stuff like that, they're swimming and they're filter feeding against that current going after um, phytoplanktons and stuff like that. So it's like, it's crazy stuff when you, when you think about it. And then um, like shad and everything like that, they're, they're, chasing, they're chasing food. So wherever the bait's chasing their bait, they're staging, and that's where the bigger fish are going to be. So essentially, you're a bait chaser instead of a striper chaser. So keep that in mind. Chase the bait. Nothing giant, luckily. <laughs> nice old bass. Whew. Mwah. So it looks like some more fish came back and uh, I put on a green tail. Maybe that's what the bass want. Let's get more. Well, everyone, we did it. So that was basically it. You know, I, I casted bucktails into rips and drop-offs and little holes, staging areas, and we managed to catch some fish. Essentially, I completed what I wanted to do. I will call it multi-species. I did a bass, fluke, and bluefish, all on a bucktail. So whatever whatever you, uh, you get out of this, just know bucktails, there's no wrong way of fishing a bucktail. Just make sure you're in the right areas and you're piecing together everything. Should I fish in front of cuts, around drop-offs, uh, where there's current, should I float it on the bottom, reel up a little bit quicker, keep my rod zip higher, keep it in, uh, above on the higher parts of the water column. I'm telling you, man, bucktails are just, they are the thing to do. But if you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comment section below because I have so many videos that we can go over and I can discuss and, and talk about things uh, inside that video that not necessarily made it into the video. So. Uh, yeah, let me know in the comments section below. Uh, again, we have stuff on the website, smoochandrelease.com slash shop. If you want to make a purchase, we got woodwork. I don't know if you can see it in the video, but we got wooden bass up there that I make. Uh, it's awesome. So I love having that piece around. We have that on the website. We sell the bucktail, silicone jigs, inline spinners, everything so you catch fresh water and salt water. And that really helps make these videos and give us the ability to make these videos. So. Thank you guys so much. I look forward to the next video. I don't know which one I'm going to talk about next, but um, if you guys want to go through the videos, comment down below which one you want to see me review next. All right. Here's to winter. Here's to winter. All right. I'll see you guys next time. Stay real, smooch and release, and have some fun on the water. I'll see you next time. I got to come over there and slap the lens.